Well, this morning we've been taking a little bit of a drive um, around Glencoe. Um, we've sort of scattered out a few a few different areas. It's been quite grey, but there's been some lovely still water on some of the lochs. So we started off actually over by Glencoe, and we spent some time just down by the shores of the loch there. Um, and I took a couple of handheld shots, but I wasn't. But it was a beautiful scene. I, I wasn't really feeling the photography there, so I didn't take many images. But we've now come over here to Kil Kilchurn Castle, or Kilkern Castle, um, which is a very well-known view viewing point. Um, the castle itself has got some railings around the bottom of it. It's not looking particularly scenic, but we did. I did want to take one shot just whilst there are some reflections on the water. Um, you can see the breeze has literally just picked up now, but a few few minutes ago it was nice and flat and we were getting nice reflections of the castle. So I took this shot where we've got the, the reeds in the foreground, and it just seems like a fairly obvious composition. But we're going to spend a little bit of time here, see if we can take some other shots. Um, it is actually forecast to rain today, so I don't know how successful this afternoon is going to be with photography but there's certainly lots of places to explore so I think we're just going to take a drive around and if the rain comes down too heavy we'll probably just end up in a pub but either way it's just great to be out this morning. So after morning driving around, we uh, we had some lunch back in Glencoe and then went back to Fort William just to pick up some supplies. And now we've come back to this very popular location here in, in Glencoe. And it's absolutely beautiful. You see, you see a lot of stunning photographs from this spot where the water's a bit higher. And um, today the, uh, the water's a bit low. But even so, I think even though we've got a little bit of drizzle coming down and there's a bit of cloud in the sky, it's just creating a little bit of mood and atmosphere. So I think we're, we're gonna have a go See if we can get some interesting shots here. So this is this is a bit of a challenging shoot, I must admit, with the rain coming down. But I've got the bolly up. I'm trying to do everything one-handed at the moment. Um, but it is a lovely composition. It's very well photographed composition. But I can understand why you've got a lovely snake of the uh, the water here, and then the mountains just looking really ominous up here, up behind it. So. Um, I'm going for a portrait orientation with this image. Um, I'm using the umbrella just to keep the rain off the lens and then I've got a little lens cap on the camera there as well. So every time I want to take a shot I can just take that lens cap off and uh, hopefully the lens is clear of water. I put a polarizer on the lens just to take any glare off that water and I'm trying to aim again for roughly that sort of quarter of a second which I actually don't need any more filters today because there's not much light, it's quite dim. So I can actually manage to get that kind of quarter of a second exposure fairly easily here, so or fifth of a second exposure even. So um, yeah, no, I think it works okay. Managed to take the shot. I think I'm gonna then probably probably pack the uh, the camera away, get it nice and dry. Um, I think everyone's here. I think we're all, despite despite the uh, the wet, we're all pretty happy and staying happy. And um, it was a bit of a trek to get here, but um, yeah success, I think. So we're on day three this morning of our, our trip down here to Glencoe and actually yesterday was such a fun day but we had not the best weather if I'm honest, it was a little bit rainy, a bit wet um, and I think it was a little bit of a struggle for photography, I think we all struggled yesterday with photography but today the weather forecast is looking a lot better um, and we've come down here to a loch um, which I believe is called Loch Tuller 
um, and it's absolutely gorgeous. We actually came down here to scout it out yesterday and um, we came to this area where there's these old uh, Caledonian pines and it's absolutely beautiful. And this morning it's lovely and still on the loch. We've just got a little bit of low cloud on the mountains up over the other side and it's just such a, a tranquil place down here this morning. It's absolutely gorgeous. I think we're all just loving it and the rain seems to have stopped as well for the moment which is brilliant. Um, so I've just come over here to this area. Um, I think uh, Jamie and Darren are just over there photographing. There's this, this, this pair of, of pines just, just here, which my head's in the way of, but it's just, just there. Um, and actually I came a little bit further over and there's a, bit, uh, there's a stand of a few more pines here, which I'm choosing to focus on initially. Um, I think there's a few images to be had here from different angles. Um, so I'm gonna sort of play around and just see if I can take a few images. Nothing fancy on the camera this morning. I've got the polarizer filter on there. Um, I don't think I need any other filters at all this morning. So um, yeah, it's just a beautiful morning and it's so peaceful. Also, um, when we first arrived here, there were some deer over on um, that island um, and Darren had his, his long lens out, was doing a little bit of wildlife photography. I'm not sure how successful he was, but um, it's just amazing just to see these things down here. It's absolutely beautiful. So I've just decided to turn around and see if I can take a few images using these two, these, this, this pair of trees here and I think that they, they work really quite nicely with the island behind them. So I've got them located on the left hand third of my image and um, yeah it's just so beautiful and tranquil here with this, this beautiful loch just sitting still and the clouds have just come down a little bit too low on the mountains behind but maybe if they lift as we're, whilst we're here. It might be nice to get some shots just with some more, more of a view of those mountains in the background. So I've just come down to the edge of a loch here and it's absolutely beautiful. The loch is so still. We've got these beautiful reflections and I've also got these beautiful low clouds over the, the mountains on the opposite side of the loch, which are just adding that little bit of atmosphere that this image needs. Um, what I've done is I've got the island with the trees on it and I've, I've, I've actually got that off to the side and I've, I've tried a, a few different angles and a, a couple of different heights just to try and get the right angle with the reflections. Um, the edge of the loch I've got running directly through the middle of the frame and actually I think the best compositions are the ones um, where I've just got uh, part of the island in shot on the left hand side and then you've got the clouds up above um, those trees on the far shore um, and yeah it's so beautiful and I think these images work really nicely I think it's the, the reflections because you've got both the clouds and the trees reflected in the water I think that's what actually makes it work really well um, so I don't want too long an exposure on this. I was debating whether or not to put a six stop filter on there just to smooth out the water. I might, I might give it a go just to see how it turns out, but actually I think probably it's not going to be needed because with these reflections when the water's so still, I think sometimes it works best just to leave that six stop filter off. Um, so I've just got the polarizer on, which isn't really doing that much, but it's just reducing a little bit of the glare. And uh, yeah, actually I've, I think this image works really well.
So Jamie actually mentioned this composition to me because I was just around the corner and I hadn't seen this and he came and told me about these stones here in the margin and he's right, this, this really is a nice composition. We've got these lovely stones just in the edge of the water which always works nicely in a, in a landscape image, I think. Um, and I've actually taken a couple of shots. I've done some without the extra filter on there, but I've, I've decided just to put a 10 stop on, just because there is just ever such a slight ripple on the water. Um, and I think the 10 stop takes that out. With a 10 stop filter, it's about a half, uh, half minute exposure, 30 second exposure. Um, and that's with a polarizer as well. So that polarizer is just cutting off the glare just here in the edge, so you can see those stones beneath the water. And then the ten stop is just taking all, that little slight ripple off off, off the water. Um, and yeah, definitely, definitely some nice images around here. I'm intrigued to know how the other guys are getting on as well. I'm sure we're all going to come away from this morning with some nice nice pictures. We've just stopped off here at Rannoch Moor and it is utterly, utterly gorgeous. We've got lovely breaks in the clouds, there's some gorgeous light hitting the mountains over the other side of this loch. Um, this loch is, is beautiful, we've got these little islets with trees on them and little rocks sitting in the water as well. It's just such a beautiful location and even though it's kind of middle of the day now and the light's quite harsh, because you've got those clouds in the sky it's just creating a nice little bit of diffusion on the light, so it's beautiful. So we're all out here with our tripods in a row taking shots and the sun's out and it's warm and it's just gorgeous so it's amazing I just up there where we we parked the car and I had the the 200 mil lens on and was just picking out a few close-up images of mountains and I actually tried to do a bit of a, a panoramic as well so we'll see if that works out but um, Gary and I have actually now just both popped down to the edge of the loch here and there's so many compositions along this little bit of shoreline. These beautiful rocks in the water and I've already talked this morning about how much I'm a fan of having rocks in the edge of the water and I reckon there's a good sort of five or six potential compositions just along this little stretch here but we've got loads of this loch to play with. There's loads of these little islands with trees on them and the mountains behind which are just catching little rays of light through the gaps in the clouds so yeah it's an amazing amazing location and um, I'm hoping we'll all come away with images from this place that we'll be happy with I'm sure we will it's absolutely stunning So I'm really liking this little spot here because we've got these rocks leading out to the island and the mountains, the perfect backdrop to the scene. Um, I've got the 10 stop filter on which is just taking this, this ripple off the water because when we first arrived here it was, a, it was really flat calm but since we've been here the, 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 the breeze has picked up slightly so we've got this ripple on the water. So I put the 10 stop filter on and um, yeah I think that, that improves it somewhat. But uh, yeah, it's just gorgeous. I'm having to focus stack the image a little bit because we've got these rocks in the foreground which are working really nicely but I think just to make sure I've got these nice and sharp but still got the, the trees in focus I'm going to do a, a focus stack of this image but um, oh, it's such a, such a gorgeous place and it's warm as well it's actually really nice and sunny now
So this evening we've decided to come up this hill just opposite the Bucolet of Moor and this is actually a, a location where I did a, a not very good video in the past um, and it wasn't a very good video for numerous reasons, it was an early early one of ours but also it was one where I'd lost most of the footage. Um, so today I've come back and I'm actually currently pretty much the same spot uh, where I was where I made that video um, and uh, it's so stunning here. It's it, it's it's one of those views which is just it's a classic view. It's been photographed so many times, but with really good reason because this is just so spectacular. You've got Bucolet of Moor, which you can just see behind me, um, and then you've got all these glacial valleys up there, which are just absolutely stunning. Looking back down there to the Three Sisters, um, which is just there above my head, and um, wow, so amazing. Um, so we're about halfway up this, this mountain. I don't know whether we're going to go all the way up. Um, I think most of the guys are, are currently down there. They, you might be able to pick them out in shot. Um, and Darren's a little bit further up. Um, I might see if I can get a little bit higher up if I can. Um, but it's just such a, such a stunning place, this. It's one of those things where I think because it's been photographed so often, it, it'll probably put a lot of people off. But if I'm honest, you know, if, you, if, 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 if you have a chance, you need to come up here because it's just one of the finest views in the UK. It's beautiful here. So I'm up now probably at the point where I think I'll, I'll stay. I don't think it's, there's much need to go much higher. From this point here, um, we've got this lovely view back down towards the Three Sisters. And the actual view of the uh, the Buchel is pretty pretty fantastic, to be honest. Um, I don't know if you're going to make him out, but Darren's actually just sat up, just up there somewhere, just up behind me. And the other guys are are just a little bit lower, so we're kind of spread out at different 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 vantage points. But um, oh, a little bit out of breath, but it is stunning, absolutely stunning. I know I just said it a second ago in the last bit of video, but this has to be one of the finest views in the UK. It really does. And I know that it's it's really well photographed. It's very much, I think, one of those honeypot spots, but for for good reason. Now saying we, we did a we did a, a recording for the pubcast earlier on this afternoon when we were we were sat in a pub and um, we were talking about honeypot locations. With these honeypot locations, some of them do receive an awful lot of footfall and it does create a little bit of damage when these population, these locations become so popular. Um, this location, there's, I mean, there's a, there's a bit of a footpath running up here, but it's not really damaged as such. But um, I think uh, there is, we were sort of saying, well, sometimes it's we feel like we shouldn't go to these locations but at the same time these, these locations are popular for a reason and often it's not until you come here that you really grasp the grandeur of these places you can see the images of them you can see the photos of them and often we, we become so familiar i mean this view just above my shoulder in in shot at the moment i'm sure it's a view which so many people are so familiar with we almost become a little bit blasé about it we become kind of kind of tired of it but honestly when you come up here and just see it, and I've and I've been to this location before, and I've seen it at sunset, and I know how impressive it is, and I've forgotten until you come up here just how impressive it is in real life. So come, come to these spots, visit them, and uh, and see for yourself because it really is just it's something else. It really is. So I've decided just to come back a little bit further up. I'm just coming up to meet Darren, who's here, who has been photographing some goats. I think, did you get any shots of the goats? Yeah, they was quite close together and kind of intertwined. Yeah. And then they've just got up and then they've just moved away. So. Right, yeah. There's some goats just up there. I don't know if they'll come out in the camera or not, but uh, yeah. Oh. Anyway, I think this is probably, probably me, I think. Are you going to go any higher, Jack and Dad? Yeah. Yeah, me too. Anyway, we'll see how we get on. 
Well, I did head up just a little bit further just to go and speak with Darren for a sec, but I've now come actually back down, um, not much further, but maybe, maybe, maybe about 20 metres or so lower down, because actually I think from this point, we do have a better vantage point here for this valley, sorry, Glen, um, behind me with uh, the road that snakes up through it. Um, and I just feel like actually from here, you actually get a, an actually a, a, a better vantage point of the buccal. So I popped down here, I think Darren might come and join me again in a minute as well. I can just about see Dave, if you just see a little bit of yellow just down there, um, that's David. Um, but yeah, it's just, it's just a truly breathtaking place. And I think probably what my tactic is, when I come somewhere like this, I think what I tend to do is I take a couple of the wider images. I've got the 24 to 105 mil lens on and I've spoken about it before on the channel, but one of the reasons I like that 24 to 105 is just the range it gives you. And what I can do with that lens is I can take a few kind of wider images and then start zooming in a little bit to go for a few more sort of tighter shots um, up to that 105 millimeter focal length. So I think that's what I'm going to do here. Uh, we're going to stick around a while. We've got a couple of hours actually till sunset, but as you can probably see, it's very overcast. So I don't think we're going to get much in the way of a spectacular light show when it actually comes to sunset, but it might be that these, these clouds just pick up a little bit and get a little bit of colour in them, which is actually fairly similar to when, when I was here before. Last time I was here, I had this spectacular light show up in the Glen up there behind me. And um, I don't think I'm going to be able to top that this evening, to be honest. But um, yeah, it's just amazing to be back here and just remind myself of just how stunning this view is. And uh, I'm sure we'll come away with a few a few images between us, all, all, all five of us. I'm sure we'll come away with some images that we'll be happy with from this place. So after taking just a couple of images for the 24 to 105, I, I did a, a sort of stitched panoramic and I did a few sort of more kind of cropped in shots down the, val down the, the glen. And um, yeah, I actually decided that actually this, this does kind of call for a 16 to 35. So I switched lenses again, I put the 16 to 35 on. And even at 16 mils, but you only just get all of this mountain in. It's so vast. It's uh, that's very, very rarely the case, but I need to go up to that wider angle. Normally the 24 mil is perfectly sufficient. So it just goes to show the scale of this place, I think. Um, so yeah, I've taken a couple of wider, wider angle shots and it may well be that I switch back to either the 200, I've actually got all my lenses with me today, so it may be that I switch back to either the 200 mil or the, the 24 to 105. If we, start, if, if we do start to get some nice light down, down in the glens, I think it'd be worth going for those slightly more telephoto images. But um, I think for now, whilst we're waiting, I'll keep the 16 mil on. Um, I'm not, ha I don't have it at 16 mil. It's more about sort of 20 mils or so. Um, but uh, yeah, I'll just uh, sit here and wait. I can see Darren a little bit further up the hill and David a little bit further down the hill. And the other two guys are just, just out, of sh out of view for me here. But um, I think we're all just in our own little little world at the moment enjoying this view. It's quite a special place.
So I think we're probably going to call it a day here. Um, I don't think the light's going to get any better this evening. It's really overcast and I don't think we're going to get an awful lot of colour in these clouds either. It's going all the way over to the horizon. Um, so I think that's probably it for the photography. But it's just such a great view up here. It's been so worth coming up here for our last evening just to, just to get back here and see this, this mountain in, in all its glory. And um, I think that's the end of the weekend as well. The other guy is going to be driving back down tomorrow morning. Um, I don't think I'll be going out to do any photography tomorrow morning, so I'll be heading home as well. It's been such a fun weekend. It's been so great to meet up with the other guys and to spend some time together doing a little bit, bit of photography and just, just having a laugh, really. It's been such such a fun weekend and i hope you've enjoyed coming along as well anyway i'm going to end this video here thanks so much for watching and i'll see you in the next one